close out our series on uh, the fruits of the Spirit and what fitting way to have a bookend in terms of the faithfulness of the saints. We started this whole work um, and, and looking into what it means to be the kind of disciple that God calls us to be, to be the people who are disciplined, to have self-control when we want to live a certain way and it would be easier to respond a certain way, but we put a boundary and bring that back and we let God work God's kindness and God's gentleness, God's patience, and God's joy through us. This is the faithfulness that we are called to. This is the faithfulness of those who have gone before us and who have run this race already and have passed it on to us. Sin clings closely, as Paul wrote, and every generation will have its own sin that it will need to break and it will need to be honest about and it will need to turn from, to repent from, and to run back to God and run back to a life that is, in fact, based in the spiritual fruits that we have studied. Today, this past week, um, today I want to celebrate faithfulness through the lens um, of those who have gone before us in that, for those of you who didn't know, this past week was the 500th anniversary of the Protestant Reformation. So 500 years ago, Martin Luther, a German monk, nailed 95 theses to the door of the Wittenberg Church in Germany. Uh, there was not social media to do a posting then, so it had to be a literal posting. Um, we had the printing press, thankfully, that fueled um, his desire to get um, scripture and the word of Christ more directly to the people. In just a little bit, we'll be um, celebrating communion at the close of this service. And if we were 500 years ago, one, I would not be up here, um, two, <laughs> I would have my back turned to you and you wouldn't even be able to see what I was doing, communion-wise. You would not be gathered around the table as we are about to be sharing this together. And you wouldn't even be receiving both bread and cup together. The closest thing that you would be seeing is when I take a wafer and break it. And it'd be an ocular communion. You'd be receiving communion by seeing me break the body of Christ and watch the miracle of that moment there. But even if you, it was even rare to have a piece of the bread shared. It was simply come, watch the priest do it, watch the priest receive it and go. And you wouldn't even understand me if you could hear me because I would be doing the whole thing in Latin. And how many of us here know Latin? Not so, oh, oh, Frida's, okay, Frida would understand, but all of us others would, would be lost. And so Martin Luther and many others, because it doesn't take just one man to do a movement, and these are just some of the many um, who were a part of this Reformation movement to bring Christ back, to claim only Christ, only faith, only scripture alone do we rely on. This year, we studied um, the book of Romans, and it was from Romans chapter 1 that Martin Luther and his countless sleepless nights finally found his way forward and understanding that salvation comes to us by grace through faith. It was a practice of the time to, it was understood that our, we earned our salvation through good works or through the purchase of indulgences that the Catholic Church was selling to um, pay our way out of hell um, for us or for loved ones or to shorten the time in purgatory. And one of those theses, number 50, is what Martin Luther had to say about that. Christians are to be taught that if the Pope knew the exactions of the indulgence preachers, he would rather that the Basilica of St. Peter were burned to ashes than to be built up with the skin, flesh, and bones of his sheep. 
for Luther, he called us to what we've been studying and what true discipleship looks like based on the fruit of the Spirit. He says, because love grows by works of love, man and woman thereby becomes better. Man and woman does not, however, become better by means of indulgences, but is merely freed from pendulums. So how do we become better? By anchoring ourselves in love, by knowing scripture, by knowing Christ, by knowing the grace that is given to us. And so the famous phrase of Martin Luther, here I stand, I can do no other. There will be those moments for us and for our own journey of faithfulness. And it will be hard and it will be messy because as much as there is sin to correct and to change and corruption to break open, there are also holy people who will decide that faithfulness and holiness look differently. They will decide that their following of God and their understanding of scripture will lead them to, leave a li to live a life and to make decisions that contradict each other. The Reformation was hard in that as much as it was a needed corrective and as much as there were no other means of doing that, it did fracture the unity of the church. And it did start a whole entire series and generations of wars and of bloodshed. And 450 years later, the Catholic Church held the Second Vatican Council that many Catholic theologians today call Luther's Council because it addressed and made so many of the changes that Luther called for 450 years earlier. It's a long time to wait. And there's a lot of pain and a lot of harm that is done in that kind of waiting and that kind of time on both sides. My prayer for us takes us back to the book of Hebrews. May we run with perseverance, with patience, with gentleness, with commitment, the race that is set before us. May we have the hard conversations and the accountability work that it does to break the sin that clings so closely. But may we do so in such a way that as much as we go to nail a thesis to a, to a door or take a stand against harm, that we do so in such a way that we are still connected to God and still able to receive God's discipline ourselves. Because we are all human and we are all imperfect. And we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. And there will be spiritual fruit and faithfulness that we do not see that another does. And we need to be able to do this journey together so that deep can call to deep and iron can sharpen iron and that together we can give a faithfulness to the building of God's kingdom that cannot happen otherwise if we are left uncorrected and undisciplined on our own. My seminary professor was the one who modeled this for me. When I was writing my credo paper, What I Believe in Systematic Theology, I landed in a different place than he did in the book that he wrote that was my starting point for mine. And when we had our meeting um, for as I was finishing my paper, he came to me and won at that first paper, did not use his power as professor over me, a student, to give me any other grade um, other than what um, I worked for um, just because our theology was different. But two said to me, if you are going to believe this and advocate for this, then I need you to answer these questions and I need you to go to this resource to help you to do so. That room that he gave me, that discipline and that call that he gave me, but also that grace, that patience, that gentleness, that self-control, was nothing short of the gift of faithfulness. And I am able to know what I believe and know it more faithfully 
because of how he sharpened me that day and how he modeled for me that day of how we can go this road together even when the content of what we are believing is different. So it is my hope and prayer for us as we move forward individually, as we move forward as the United Methodist Church, that we are able to model the spiritual fruit of faithfulness, that we are able to say what we believe, but in such a way that leaves room for us to be corrected when we need to be, that leaves room for us to find God's discipline that as much as it's awful and as much as we would rather skip that part, it is what forms us. It is what gives us the strength to continue the race. And as the scripture says, it will not be easy, but who of us have been faithful to the point of shedding our own blood? There are others our ancestors, our mothers and fathers of faith who have followed in their faithfulness to the point of shedding their own blood. If we want to bring the power of Christ to the powers of evil of this world, whether they be within the church and corruption we have to fight or without the church and a gospel and a hope that we need to share, we have to do the hard work of discipline and of breaking the power of sin in our lives to give all of who we are to run this race. And so this day is a day to remember those who have gone before us, who have tra blazed the trail and given us one to follow. A day that we remember that there is work to be done and to not shy away from it because it is hard, but to give all of who we are to it so that those who follow after us will know that much more of what it means to live in the wholeness of God, of peace with justice, of loving kindness, and of righteousness. It takes a village to bring about any reformation. So for the reformation that has happened and Martin Luther's finding in the book of Romans, for the reformation that happened that brought us here as United Methodists as John Wesley heard Martin Luther's preface to the book of Romans in Aldersgate and found his heart strangely warmed and found his way, may we too find our ways to continue this race and to win it in all of the glory that is ours in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. So our discipleship.